I did not write to teach people what they don't know. I just came to remind them what they already know. You won't find in my words things that people do not know about or have any doubts about. The opposite. I'm going to speak about very famous and well-known things, that the truth of them is known to everyone. But because it's so famous and so common, people turn to neglect them and ignore them. Only few would dig and go deep into the learning of the perfectness of the work, of the avodah, of the efforts that a person has to have in his life to reach the truth of God. The love, the fear, the dvekut, the closeness. Sometimes you find a person that learns a lot of Torah. You see right away he's, he's loving the Torah. He's crazy about the Torah. It's a positive addiction. But the way he learns Torah is digging and going from all directions around the same subject. It's called pilpulim, investigations in his mind. All kinds of things that are not in the end productive to improve himself. What's the purpose of life? Just to know a lot? No. To know a lot without improving who you are. You're still the same proud person. You're still, you're still jealous. You're still stingy. You're still angry. You're still lazy. You still don't have a muna. You're not honest. You're not decent. You're not sharing. You're not bal chesed. You have no kindness. You're arrogant. So many problems about you. You're not a good husband, you're ungrateful, you're not faithful, you're not a good father. Everything you finally do something, it's not for the sake of heaven. You always think, what's, what's in it for me? And then, oh, you know, 60, 70 years, you look very religious and everything fine. And then you come to Shamaim and you find out that basically your whole life was, like they say in Israel, grinding water. You grind water, you still have water after a million years. Same water. You grind, 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 but you really did not achieve anything. But what do you mean, Hashem, I finished the Shas 50 times, the Talmud. It took me a few years every time, from morning to night, all day, it's digging, smoke coming out of my ears. Very nice, and you're going to get reward, reward for that. But the ultimate purpose of life, you really hardly touched. If you're going to search for it, for what? for the ultimate level that you can reach in this life with your relationship with God, with your Creator. If you finally decided to search for it, it's already a big step. Most people don't search for it. They live in total darkness. They have no idea what they do here, Bichlal. 70, 80 years, such a one big lost life. Not one man, not one productive minute in their entire life. Not one positive moment in their whole life. 70 years eating, drinking, running, driving, sleeping, waking up, making money, doing, crying, laughing. Everything in the end was one total waste of time. Did not touch one second their mission that the Creator put them here for. What a tragedy. The biggest tragedy possible. No, there's no bigger tragedy than this for the individual. And for us as a nation, if you collect all the small tragedies, all the individual tragedies and combine them together, it's a one huge national tragedy. Each one of us, if you don't do it, nobody will do it for you. Nobody will do it for you. Remember, nobody will make you humbled. You only can make yourself humble. Nobody will make you. Nobody will make you generous if you won't work on it. Nobody will make you honest if you don't kill yourself to become honest. How you become honest? You improve your faith. The more faith you have, the more emunah, the more honest and generous you are. One comes out of the other. If you don't have emunah, you'll never be generous. If you don't have emunah, you'll never be honest. You always cheat. You don't believe that it's 100% what Hashem wants to give you, and that's it. And there's no point of stealing, cheating, lying, deceiving. What's the point? Stealing for myself? 
If it's mine, it's mine. If it's not mine anyway, it's gonna leave me. So what's the point? It's like one person who steals from one pocket and put in the other pocket. And thinks he got away with it. If it stayed by you, it was yours to begin with. And if not, it will never stay by you. If you finally decided to search it, King Solomon says, do it like a person who searched for a treasure. As Tavi Nirat Hashem, you finally decided to search for the truth and for the right direction in life. Ve'ata Israel, and now Israel, Ma Hashem Elokecha Shoel Mi'imach. What is your God asking from you? To fear God, to follow all His ways, to love Him, to serve Him with all your heart and all your soul. First, fear your God. To follow His ways, try to be like Him. He's merciful, be merciful. He's kind, you be kind. He's honest, you be honest. To love Him, it's only the third in the list. To love Him, to serve Him with all your heart and all your soul. You are a servant in this world. And not only you shouldn't be embarrassed that you are a servant, you are the luckiest person that from all the people in the world, the king, the master of universe, chose you to be his close servant and gave you the title, my son. Fear, following his way, loving him, purifying the heart to love him, keeping all the mitzvot, and the fear, it's called irat aromemut. Ma'u rachum afata rachum. Hashem is merciful, make sure you are also merciful. Every good thing about Hashem that you know about, right away imitate him. Everyone who goes to the right direction, establishing the Torah, he makes great satisfaction in front of Hashem, in front of God. And his heart is waking up, and he satisfies his father and his mother who passed away from the world. And he will be very happy, very complete, that he has the merit to do it. And this is the perfectness of the heart. It will be pure, clean heart with great intention. Attention and intention. That I only do what I have to do now because Hashem told me and that's all my mind is. I'm serving Hashem right now. Please do not disturb me. Not with money, not with job offers, not with shiduchim, not with nothing. Right now I'm very busy. When I do mitzvah, I don't want to hear anything. Purifying your system, your heart, which re bring you to a total isolation in the level compared to the rest of the world. And this isolation bring you to purity, which will grant you to midat chasidut. You go above righteousness to the ultimate goal. And that righteousness, this midat chasidut, make you humble, because you know I don't deserve big credit for it. And being humbled eliminate making sins. You won't make sins because you are humble. And making sins and, and being humble and not making sins elevate your holiness. And elevating your holiness bring you to a level of a prophet, Ruach HaKodesh, that you begin to see things that other people don't see. And Ruach HaKodesh Mevi'a Lidei Tchiyat HaMetim. And this prophecy, this Ruach HaKodesh brings to the resurrection of the death. And each one of these details that we will get the level of fearing God and remember our obligations towards Him that the material addictions, the materialistic addictions around us always remove this knowledge and understanding from our hearts. What's the biggest enemy of a Jew 
on the way to get to the top level in Hashem's pyramid, in God's pyramid, the materialistic desires, food, women, movies, sport, baseball, football, this player, that player, this car, this watch, this party, sushi, steak, barbecue. That's the biggest enemy. And almost nobody feels that way. Ah, fanatic. Why not to enjoy life? Enjoy. You can't get close to Hashem because you're addicted to it. It always comes before the goal. You cannot do what needs to be done. Why? It's busy with his addictions. It's all of us like this. The materialism of nature, removing it from our heart and confuse us with our research to get and find the truth. And our foolishness, our foolishness causes us to lose everything. And this is what Hashem say, this is what David Amelech wrote in Tehillim, Oreni Hashem darkecha, ahalech ba'amitecha. Show me Hashem your way, that I can walk through the aisle, the truth of yours. The truth. Show me the right aisle to enter. This aisle, this aisle, this aisle, millions of aisles. Which one is the aisle of the truth, of the ultimate way to get to you? Dedicate my heart to do only one thing. What is it? To fear you. Nothing else. I don't want my heart to be busy with anything else in life. Only one thing I want my heart to be good with, King David wrote. What is it? Fear you. If I fear you, I know I'm going to reach the highest level. <laughs>